Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. A rectangle is four times longer than its width. The area of this rectangle is 20 centimeters squared. Find the length and the width of the rectangle. Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, Check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, let's take a look at this question. So a rectangle is four times longer than its width. The area of this rectangle is 20 centimeters squared. We wanna find the length and the width of the rectangle. Let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following. So the length is four times the square root of five centimeters and the width is the square root of five centimeters. Now you'll have to judge for yourself if you um, to actually took the square root of five and you have a decimal value, but this is the right answer. And if you got this right, well, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you could tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic quadratic equation word problems. Now, if you tell your friends and family that, uh, they'll have no idea what you're talking about, but it just sounds so impressive. But uh, anyways, good job if you got this right. And uh, as I indicated, what we're dealing with here is a quadratic equation word problem. And quadratic equations are things that you learn in like first year algebra, very, very important stuff. And if you didn't get this right, we'll stick around for a couple minutes. You'll be looking like this person in no time. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. And uh, first we want to just recognize that we're dealing with a math word problem. So you always want to apply the rule of three. Now this is my rule, but um, it served me well and served my students pretty well. And the rule of three is the following. Just don't read a problem one time and then just start doing stuff. So what can happen is you're like, oh, I see the problem. I know exactly what to do. And you'll start doing all this stuff. And then you'll kind of discover after maybe a minute or two, potentially, not all the time, but very often than not, you'll kind of go down a road that you'll be like, you know what, maybe that wasn't the best road. Then you'll return back to the problem and you'll be like, oh, this is a better way to do the problem. And then you'll go in this direction. So what you're doing here is wasting time and all of this could be avoided if you just stop and pause. This is a critical part uh, to solving any problem. But once you've understood the problem by reading it three times and making sure you understand the question, what we wanna do is try to model the information in the problem. And this is pretty easy because we're dealing with a rectangle. So it's probably a good idea to draw a rectangle and then try to uh, basically um, match what's going on in this word problem to a figure. Now, before I show you this uh, little rectangle, uh, we need to kind of use a variable here because we have an unknown value. So we're trying to determine the length and the width, but there's a relationship between the length and the width. So we have to establish some variable. I'll use the variable X and uh, let's make this easy on ourselves. Let's let the uh, width uh, be equal, uh, equal to this variable X. So whatever the width is equal or whatever the width is, uh, rather, let's kind of do it this way. Let's let that equal to X. So this is the way I'm going to do it. You could let X equal uh, uh, to the length, but that would be a little bit more complicated. So if you want to go ahead and try to construct a model with X uh, being a variable that represents the width, we'll go ahead and try to do that right now. I'm gonna show you what's going on, at least in terms of uh, this setup right now. Okay, so here is our lovely rectangle, and here is our width. Uh, of course, it is X units long. Now, a couple things about the, a rectangle. I'll get to the length here in a second. So a rectangle, by definition, is a qu uh, quadrilateral where uh, the corners are 90 degrees. Now I know this is kind of technical, but we need to understand what a rectangle is. Basically, opposite sides 
are congruent. In other words, the length uh, over here is the same length over here, and over here the width is the same length over here. So basically, if the width uh, is x units long here, it's also x units long here, and the length is 4x. Now, why is this 4x? Well, hopefully you figure this part out because the length is four times longer than the width, okay? So that is the length, now four times longer. Not So this right here, if the width is four and the length is four times longer, it means it's gonna be four X, not four plus X. That would be four more than the width, four times the width is four X. So you gotta be very careful with this and always double, triple check that in fact, you interpreted the information in the prom correctly because, you know, if you didn't, you can kind of, you know, double, you know, kind of go back and say, all right, let me double check, triple check, because you don't want to go any further until you get the model of this situation down as well as you can. Okay, so here is our rectangle. We have the width and we have the length expressed as x and 4x, where x is equal to the width. But we also know that the area of this rectangle is 20 centimeters squared. Now, this is critical because we can't determine what these values or what the value of x is. Uh, and of course, that represents our width and 4x is our length. We can't find what x is unless we have an equation, okay? So this is the next step. And most algebra work, uh, word problems work the same way. You're going to assign a variable to represent something, a variable or variables, depending on the type of, uh, type of problem that you're dealing with. And then you're going to use all the information in the problem to construct uh, an equation. So once you have this equation, you can solve this equation. And of course, you're solving for these unknown values. But in this particular uh, problem, we need to know this simple formula of the area of a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the width. Hopefully you knew that, but if you didn't, uh, well, of course, you do need to know this in order to solve this problem. Okay, so um, most of you should be uh, kind of seeing where I'm going with this problem. We have the length here. We have the width, so we can just uh, plug in x and 4x for the length and the width. We know the area is 20 centimeters squared, so that's what the area is equal to. So hopefully it's pretty obvious on what type of equation we're going to build. Let's go ahead and see it right now. Okay, so the area again is the length times the width. We have the length, we have the width. So the area equal the length times the width. So we'll substitute the length, which is what? 4x, the width is x. So 4x times x is 4x squared. So this is what the area is equal to, but the area is also equal to this, okay? Which is 20 centimeters squared. So we can drop the units of measure here uh, in a second and just kind of uh, basically um, have this expressed in this way, 4x squared is equal to 20. Okay, so the length times width, which is the area, is 4x squared, and the actual area is 20. So now we have a lovely equation, but this type of equation right here is a quadratic equation, and hopefully you know how to solve one. If you do not, um, I'll show you how to solve this basic quadratic equation here in just one second. Then, of course, if you need help with this type of stuff or more algebra help, I'll give you some suggestions. But let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wouldn't interrupt this lovely math video if I didn't need your support. So, um, you know, since I've been on YouTube, at least posting my videos, which is well over 10 plus years, um, I think I have uh, over 2,500 uh, math videos posted at this time. It's crazy. I have 80 million views. That's wild to me to even think in those terms. But unfortunately, over these 10 years that I've been on uh, YouTube, math proficiency uh, globally and, uh, you know, a lot of different countries is doing this, which is not good. OK, uh, this is a problem. Uh, people seem to be getting, you know, uh, less proficient in math, not more proficient. And uh, this is um, also not good because just, you know, our base, our world is becoming more technical, okay? And just having strong analytical skills, uh, you know, is really going to be, uh, I think, uh, critical uh, for the skills of the future. So, you know, I figure that, you know, maybe I can do something about this by teaching math in a way I hope that uh, most people can uh, like and understand. But here's the deal, okay? If you are struggling in mathematics, 
please do not give up. Okay, do not give up. And I'm going to take one fast, quick second here. I know I'm interrupting the, the problem. And some of you might be saying, Mr. YouTube Math Man, now you need to be quiet and move on with the problem. Well, listen, uh, I do these videos to help people who are basically lost in math and they say, I'm bad in math. Well, if this is a true or false statement that you have to ask yourself, I'm going to tell you right now, that is not the case. You are not bad at math. Okay, even if you don't understand this problem or if you're having difficulty or if even failing your math class, okay, what you have to realize is this, that to learn math, it requires a lot of work and effort, okay, so there's no easy path, so if you've been looking for an easy path, there's been somebody who's been telling you, oh, it's uh, learning all this stuff, it's easy, well, stop listening to that person, it's not easy, okay, it just, uh, but it's not, um, but it's possible, okay, I guess that's what I'm trying to say, so you need to really kind of buckle down and, and put your best um, effort forward, it's going to pay off, but the second part of this is you need great math instruction. Do not try to learn math by little quick tutorials, little you know, uh, you know, know, quick reviews and summaries. That's okay if you already mastered the stuff, but if you're trying to learn math, math for the first time, you need comprehensive, in-depth instruction. That's where I'm trying to help you out. So if you don't have a math teacher, I'd like to be your math teacher. And if you want to be my student, just hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. And uh, if you need help with algebra or anything, uh, that I'm not covering in this video. Check out my main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. I know I've taken a lot. Uh, been uh, I know I've taken a lot of time to explain all this, and some of you are saying, "Boy, you speak too much." Listen, I get it, but I have to do this because this is uh, you know very important. It's a very important message to me. That's why I make these videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. So here is our lovely uh, equation: four x squared is equal to twenty. Uh, again, I hope you have the skills to solve this quadratic equation. There's all different types of equations in mathematics and especially algebra. You have linear equations. We have quadratic uh, equations. You have systems of equations. You have uh, exponential equations, logarithmic equations. You have rational equations. Radical, you, you get what I'm <laughs> kind of getting at. So you can't just say, oh, I want to learn how to solve equations in algebra. No, you, there's a lot to learn. So this is a quadratic equation, uh, meaning that there will be two solutions, uh, either real or imaginary. In this case, we were, we're going to have two real uh, solutions. So how do you solve this? Very, very easy. Uh, this particular quadratic equation is very easy because we don't have an x term. So what we can do here is isolate this x squared by dividing both sides of the equation by 4. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to get 4 divided by 4, of course, is 1x squared or x squared. And 20 divided by 4 is 5. All right, so at this point, we have x squared is equal to 5. So to solve this uh, qu equation right here, all we have to do is take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 5 is both positive and negative 5. So x uh, is equal to square root of 5 is one solution, and x is equal to negative square root of 5 is the other solution. Now, because we're dealing with an actual, like, you know, uh, object here, uh, you know, a rectangle with actual measurements, we're going to throw out this negative value. So we're not, we're not going to be dealing with negative centimeters. Well, we're going to be dealing with positive centimeters. So we'll keep this as our answer. Or as our answer. So x is equal to the square root of 5 is the correct answer. Okay, but what does that represent? Well, remember, x is the width. So x is equal to the square root of 5 centimeters. Remember, our area was uh, centimeters squared. So when we uh, took the square root of this uh, of centimeters squared, we ended up with centimeters. You have to be really be careful with units of measure. If you don't put these units of measure, uh, you know, in your solution on a test or exam, it's possible that your teacher uh, could dock you some points. Okay, so you don't want to be this person on a test and you get everything right and be like, but teacher, teacher, you know, I got it right. But like, hey, you know, you got to make sure you understand the actual, you know, uh, solution to the problem. So units of measure are important. Okay, so the width is uh, square root of 5 centimeters. And remember, the length is 4x. So if x is the square root of 5, so we're just going to take that 4 and multiply it by the square root of 5. Again, it's centimeters. So this is our length. And this is the solution to the problem. Okay, so again, we're dealing with, uh, you know, algebra uh, word problems. And depending upon what uh, topic you're studying in algebra, whether it's systems or quadratic equations or linear equations or 
exponential equations, it doesn't make a difference. You're going to have word problems in these various particular uh, topics. So how do you get better at word problems? Well, before you start doing a bunch of word problems, make sure you have the underlying skills first. Okay, so make sure you know how to solve quadratic equations, linear equations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then apply those skills to uh, solve word problems. And the way you get better at word problems is through practice, practice, practice. And if you want to solve more word problems with me, go to my YouTube channel. I have a ton of additional word problems. I really enjoy uh, posting those type of problems because they are interesting and, you know, a bit of a challenge. But if this particular video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.